It's just um, that's the law. You remember that early arraignment was during the vacation. So it was just uh, an interim thing. Yeah, because it was the vacation judge that took it. But now the matter is commencing before the regular court. Yes, um, you know, initially the case was before a vacation judge. And um, generally, normally after um, the vacation, such cases will be reassigned to a regular court. So, and I think that's the reason why the case was reassigned to this court. Now we have done the rearrangement before a regular court, not a vacation judge. Now and then it's adjourned for trial to um, the next adjourned date. Uh, we have a list of witnesses, I think should be the range of um, 15 or thereabouts. Uh, so, but it, it's not uh, compulsory, we call all the witnesses and we may also call more than the witnesses listed. Yeah, we are glad to know that you're still there. This is democracy and the rule of law. And we are moving up over to the next topic, EFCC. Uh, mm -hmm. Just over the week on Wednesday, to be precise, the EFCC rearranged the former, the suspended accountant general over the 109 billion naira fraud, alleged million naira, a billion naira fraud. Uh, Barisa Kalaoli. Mm. The question I asked when I learned that it was rearranged was why rearrange when you can just transfer a case file to another judge and the matter continues from there? Why rearrange? Will this not also delay the process? No, I don't think so. I think the prosecuting authority have um, given us the reasons and the circumstances that has led to to the rearrangement. Okay. Uh, if trial had started on a vacation charge, uh, our elementary principle of law is that uh, if you are taken to another court, or the trial judge uh, normally after the, the me have gone on their own vacation or whatever, after the other ones have resumed, the case has to start at the novel. No. And then when it starts the novel, it has to be before another another uh, judge. Must start it, it must start afresh. Fresh. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, exactly. Uh, the charges will be read afresh to him. They will take his plea and what have you. And then uh, maybe new bail applications will be filed and then, uh, and then uh, argued. Uh, these are the procedures which um, we really cannot uh, contest. What will be paramount in our mind is that uh, why would you arraign the man before a vacation judge on that kind of a very fundamental, very serious uh, 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 charges that we are leveling against and when you do know in fact and indeed that there's no way the vacation judge will be able to conclude a trial before within one or two months that um, you will be sitting as a vacation judge. It boils down to what we have always been, I mean people have always complained about that. The prosecutor should be ready with his case in terms of investigation, in terms of assembling his witnesses and what have you, and in terms of tidying of his paper before you begin to take people to court. Okay. But too many times, people are arranged or taken to court in a kind of what has been described as the unlawful. A, we mean a kind of way of withholding charge, which our court has said, look, has no place in our no jurisprudence law. and mm. order. So my suspicion is that uh, they merely took him to court at that period in time, rather than grant him maybe administrative bail, and then for him, when you are now ready, and then the court that will um, be able to try him from the beginning to the end, is empanel or is sitting, then you take him to court. But they just merely take you there as a kind of, so to say, a withholding a charge, and then once uh, then, then they begin to assemble their paper and their witnesses and all that. Okay. And then when they get they now take it before, which it is highly condemnable. Too many times you'll find out. If it wasn't the accountant general of the Federation, if it was the ordinary person, he probably would have still been languishing in, in, the, prison. in prison until the court uh, resumes uh, back from their vacation. But because of the status of the man, I think he may have been granted administrative bail, or he may have been granted bail at that period in time, and then he yes, go back to some yes, It is something that we should condemn. That is the actually the question I wanted to ask uh, by mm. uh, Mr. James. Uh, sincerely, if you look at the question I asked a lawyer yeah. one time, stealing and criminal breach of trust, mm. trust mm, is one of, a part of the 14 count charge mm. against him. If 
it is a gem that is stole. Is it supposed to be at home or in the cell? I know for capital offense, yes. They said uh, if you have killed somebody, if you have done something, you remain there till the trial period. No, that's everything. not true. Even no. in capital okay. offenses, in capital offenses it can be bad sometimes. Be okay, bad. but for, for mm -hmm. 109 billion, Nigerians See, uh, are let's, saying let's what is happening. I'm Jude. Okay. Jude. I've been in this practice for almost 30 years. Okay. And I know without uh, that sometimes the prosecution plan to fail in trial. Mm. Mm. Not preparing the... No, they, they, mm. it's an intentional mm. act to lose the case in trial, mm. sometimes. Okay. So, you see, a lot of things happen in Nigeria that, uh, I mean, my colleague here too, mm. uh, I'm, I'm sure he may not want to come up and, mm. and say it like that, but we see these things happen. Okay. Now, first and foremost, a man that stole $100,000, you see the EFCC parading him with yes, placards, placards. <laughs> over the social Convicted media. Convicted and sentenced. He's already, he, in fact, they parade him. Mm. Where has this man been parade? I don't even know how he looks. I don't know him. Yes, they say it's illegal. Parading is illegal in Lagos State. Uh, there's a law that says you don't parade criminals. Mm. But it still happens in Lagos. Mm. Mm. Now, a man that stole 109 billion naira is just because of, of, of there's no way that man will not get bail there's no way he will not fulfill his bail condition so what am i saying sir i hope i hope mm. that this is not this trial will not die before it starts academic trial i, I I'm, I'm hoping because a man with 109 billion can do a lot mm. <laughs> he can do a lot and like i said when i started i said Sometimes the prosecution mm. plan to lose the case. I mean, he has the money. Barista, mm. uh, looking at from what uh, Barista Jim just yes. said now, <laughs> uh, sincerely, if, if you look at this matter, uh, the man, the judge actually asks the person in question now and others to submit their passport to the registry. Mm. Does that mean that when the first bill was granted, it, 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 it was not in that ruling that he should submit his passport? If he had bailed out of the country, <laughs> like what would have me, happened? Like me, not did. <laughs> what would have happened? We, uh, we must uh, also consider, give it to the judges. They are women, men. sometimes um, uh, they may not uh, be able to remember everything mm. uh, at the same time. And then it is also not impossible that even before the man was arraigned, the prosecutor, that is uh, the prosecuting authority, okay. may have confiscated his uh, passport okay. at that period in time and uh, kept it uh, with him. Then sometimes, too, there are certain caliber of people who knows that even when you don't seize their passport and what have you, they, they are like a golden fish. Wherever they, they go, run. they can't run. Okay. I mean, they, you, they, will, they will be too conspicuous for people not to be able to fish them out. Uh, is the <laughs> Yes, she, she did. Had, she was too big. She did. And uh, she had planned her own a long time ago. Yeah, you know, she's also a, a citizen of uh, the Dominican, Dominican Republic, Republic and yeah. what have you. And I think uh, also... Are you sure this man is not a citizen of somewhere? <laughs> He's yeah. a billion? Know that. Again, um, so, most times too, it is not the quantum of money per se okay. that determines um, the attitude of the court to either granting you pay or not granting you pay. And that is why it is said that um, uh, granting of pay by our court uh, depends on, um, uh, uh, how do I put it now? It's, uh, it's solely the job of the court. And he must exercise it judicially. Judicially and judicially. Okay, okay. And all that. Because, uh, so, okay, when you, when you are done. Aha. Uh -huh. So, if, for example, when they apply for his bail and then all manners of paper were put in to say that uh, health why this man is physically charged, he his age is this <laughs> and that, his yeah. render meritorious service to have risen to the level of the chief attendant and what have you. It's not impossible that the court may be a little bit uh, 
a lenient in give, granting him uh, uh, the kind of bill that they may have granted him in the first time. But be that as it may, let us uh, uh, say this. And this may look a little bit uh, unrelated. The ASU people just uh, finished their, I mean, oh, all oh, of their strikes. And one of the bone of contention is that the pay system, I mean, the payroll the software IPPIS, where IPPI yeah. that is going to be used, uh, the ASU people faulted it. They want and they tax. went and then designed their own tax. program and what have you. Which they said, so if with the IPPI that the federal government has acquired, and which is being used to monitor the, the federal government the uh, uh, money. How come that they might be able to steal as much as 109 billion naira? So this Where also raises very, very personal issues that uh, uh, we should also be very, very concerned about, okay. especially when it comes to the management of the nation's uh, resources. Resources. Mm. By, by Sir James, mm. you know, when I started introducing the topic, I mm. said that the accountant general was suspended. He was not dismissed. Mm -mm. Yeah. He can't be dismissed. Yes, Until because of the civil service exactly. rules. Exactly. Yes. But do we do that too for junior officers? I, 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 because I believe a a, 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 they will have set up a panel that will sit over a matter and by the time they finish the panel, they will dismiss the person and will now go and try be okay. tried in the normal court. Uh, what, what, um, I think that's how it works. Mm -hmm. I think when you, in the civil service, I think then a number of queries must have been given, given to you. To, yes. And then you face the disciplinary committee. committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, the disciplinary committee may find you guilty or not. not. And then if they find you guilty, they, they advise the authorities to terminate your mm -hmm. appointment. appointment. And then if you, are, if you are not happy with that situation or their findings as an individual, you go to to court to challenge your dismissal. The question you asked is very germane. Mm. Was this man, did he go through disciplinary committee? No. Mm. Don't forget, it was an investigation of the EFCC. Okay. Now, the EFCC unraveled the mystery of the 109 billion. Did they report him to the authority, which I think they did, and they, have, they may have presented the facts to mm. the minister. It was the minister of finance that sacked, uh, suspended him. Okay. Now, like you asked, why hasn't he been dismissed? Because I don't know whether on suspension he's still collecting salary. <laughs> because on suspension, you are still a staff. You are not yet dismissed. Dismissed, yes. So you are still a staff of the organization. Now, the minister suspended him. Which authority did she have? Did, she go, did the man go through disciplinary committee? where the things brought before her, uh, the, a disciplinary committee who looked at it to find out whether he was culpable or not, then did they recommend his suspension or recommended his sack? Sure. But because of the circumstances, I'm sure he's pleading not guilty, obviously. He's pleading not guilty. So he will be suspended and removed from the office mm. so that investigation can be carried out that properly was. without him. Because okay. if he's still uh, locking around, around he may be able to hamper, I mean, you know, the investigation processes. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> with him also, he's a very senior officer, mm. a very very senior. In fact, he's number one because he's the accountant general. general yes. He's the head of that unit. Mm. So I don't know who who will, who will sit and which panel who will, which panel will be set for him, apart from him and the minister. And the minister has done the right thing to suspend him, now look, step aside. There is overwhelming evidence, I'm sure, by the EFCC okay. that this man has done X, Y, Z. I, mm, I learned yes. that they have seized a lot of his properties, that he owns a whole village somewhere, mm. in uh, a, a market, he okay. owns a market somewhere. Yes. Mm. They have traced all these things to him. I'm sure they have things to nail him. Mm. But okay. I believe that this is going to be a very tight uh, trial. Yes, because the matter has been adjourned to the, the, the 3rd of November. Yes. The man has been able to hire heavy senior advocates of Nigeria <laughs> to, to do their game. And uh, he might, you know, at the end of the day, he might come out with plea bargaining. Hmm. And then they will say, okay, because according to Atiku, he said when he was uh, in government with uh, Obasanjo, all the people that had stolen money, he called them together and said, okay, 
uh, we'll give you 5%. Give us the bulk of the money. I think that's corruption itself, though. Hmm. But let's not go there. Somebody stole your money. You are giving him 5% of the money to collect the rest. I mean, that's so I'm sure that's how this one will end. More than right. 9 billion, we will still have some money. Well, we, yeah. we, we hope that the that's authority will become a House of Rep member. Let well, me quickly uh, chip I want us to go to mm. the last topic. Mm. Let me quickly okay. chip in that uh, uh, the suspension is not peculiar to the civil service yes. alone. No. Anytime mm. a crime is alleged to have in been public committed, office. Mm. Uh, I mean, even in mm. private companies, companies and all, yeah. most times the law always requires that. Uh, it should be proven beyond reasonable doubt. doubt. And before it could be proven beyond reasonable doubt, what the police must have done their investigations and all that. And the person must have been prosecuted in the court of competent jurisdiction. If thereafter he is found uh, guilty yeah. and all that, then he follows the, all the other consequential uh, 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 things will now uh, follow. Look at the, some of the policemen who have been indicted and some who have been put through, through trial yes. in some of these uh, very you know, small I mean, cases. The At the end of the day, when they were acquitted and all that, some of them even rose to the level of uh, AIG yeah. and DIG yes. before they eventually left uh, the, service. the service. The law, the presumption of innocence, it loses there mm. until proven, you run otherwise. through the entire gamut of the trial. And then the court comes up uh, at the end of the day with a decision that either is suspending uh, somebody is uh, convicted or is discharged or what have you. Okay, uh, the authority